Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over sprite navigation, or basically navigation menus that rely on shifting the position of a background image. Okay, now this form of navigation has actually been around for quite a while, and the website A List Apart had a great article on this back in 2004. Um, and it's still a fantastically written article that uh, has a lot of value, so you should check it out. Apple, you'll notice they've had this navigation menu for quite a while, and this is an example of a sprite navigation. Apple is actually relying on this master image. Basically, it's one image with various states of gray and in indentation, and that's how they create on hover this effect. And of course, if you click on a particular menu item, the active page is even darker than a hover state. And all they're doing is taking this master image and they're repositioning it based on the user's action, whether it's hover or whether it's an act in an active page. So super popular tool for using with navigation menus. This is another master graphic that's not really for navigation, but it allows the website to have different icons. So imagine only one of these little icons being shown. So that's kind of what we want to play around with. Now, the trick to sprite navigations basically is to create a, a window, a portal. And we can do this in a number of different ways. We're going to do it with anchor tags, but it could be done with divs and spans and all kinds of stuff. And the visitor can only see a portion of the background image at one time. So in order to really appreciate what's going on, let's try it. So I've got a blank web page set up here, and I have my image off to the side just so you can kind of see what the master image looks like. It's about 300 pixels uh, wide and um, 120 pixels tall. So basically each color bar is 40 pixels tall, and that's going to be important to know. I'm going to head over to my web page, and I'll just run right down to the body section. In fact, I will keep that figure right up there and I'll move down a little bit lower here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a basic navigation menu using an unordered list. In fact, I'll even go ahead and wrap this in a set of nav tags just to be a little bit more authentic. And then an anchor. Just do a dummy pound sign there. And I will go ahead and copy this, paste it a couple times. So that now we're going to have basically a little three item menu. And I'll just go ahead and correct this and correct that. Okay, so I've got my basic unordered list. And of course, if I look this, look at this back on my web page, it is simply a bulleted list. So I want to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and take a few minutes with my nav list items. And I'm going to say list style type none. Let's get rid of those bullets. And I think I don't want to do too much with this, but I do want to point out a really common thing to do nav anchors. So the anchors in my navigation menu, I'm going to go ahead and do display block, convert those into block elements. And I'll go ahead and set their width. 300 pixels and the height to 40 pixels, which happens to be the dimensions of one of those bars on my graphics. I'll do a little bit of margin, uh, five, and I'll do six pixels on all four sides, and this is going to be the important part. I'm going to display, and uh, I've already done that, I'm going to do a background image URL images slash and of course my image is going to be my CSS menu one dot PNG and let's see what this has done for us. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Oh so that we can really visualize what's going on. I'm going to put a temporary border on here. I'll put a red border on all of my anchor tags so you can kind of see how they're going to look. And there we go. So my anchor tags you can clearly see um, with the red borders and they're using the background image. Now you could be wondering how come I can't see more of this background image. This is one image, not three images. My anchors are sized perfectly to only display the green portion. Now if my anchors were taller, let's say they were 70 pixels tall instead of 40, you would start to notice the red peeking through. And of course if my anchors were 120 pixels tall, 
you would notice all three portions of the image showing through. But I only want to see a portion at a time, so I'm going to go back to 40 and I can only see that particular part of the image. Now, if it, was my if it was my decision to only show the red portion, well, here's what I would do. I would go to background position, and there's two values you put in here. You've got the X, which is the horizontal, and the Y. So the X, I'll just keep it zero. I don't want to shift my background image left or right at all, but the Y, the vertical, I do want to shift. I want to shift my image up negative 40 pixels. So I'll go ahead and save that, browser refresh, and now I can see the red portion. By putting in this negative number, I've shifted the background image up. Now if I put in a positive number, like 20 pixels, it would be shifting it down. And what you're going to start to see here is since my image is tiling, the green is pushing down and the black is going to start to spill over back from the top. So it's tiling. So I'm going to head back to negative 40 pixels. And there we go. So now I'm displaying the red portion of that background image.